Hello, and welcome back to Locusts and Wild Honey, the preaching ministry of Birth of the Baptist Orthodox Church in Pinckney, Michigan. I'm Father Methodius Kvastek, priest and rector of this community. I hope you will find the materials here to be spiritually beneficial. Thank you for joining me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations to all and welcome on the great feast of the Theophany of our Lord, the baptism of him in the Jordan River by John. It is with great joy that we celebrate this feast. As we said last night, we have all been conditioned by American consumerism. We go through, we don't really do this anymore, but there is residual. There's still some residual in us. We go through the holidays um, as if to check a box. All right, we've got nativity out of the way. No one celebrates the circumcision of our Lord, which is a great feast of the church, great feast of the Lord. And then I think that still people celebrate theophany, but they celebrate it after having used all of their energy on nativity. After having burned all that energy up, then it's like, uh, Theophany. Okay, we're going to bless the waters, and then we'll have holy water, and then the good will have holy water, and then we can just go home. And this is, it's Friday, right? Is today Friday? I have no idea what day it is. I, uh, this whole week has just been a blur. Uh, but it's, it's Friday, and that means that we are not even getting started on our services for the weekend yet. And we've already been in here doing the royal hours of Theophany, which God helped us with. And the vigil service last night, I was carried through that service. It, it didn't seem like it was three and a half hours long to me. It seemed like I was just trying to keep up with it. And it was just this, it was just this theophanic, taboric cloud that was sort of leading me through the, the wilderness. And so it was. And here we are today in the temple, and we heard from the epistle wonderful things. We heard that we were set aside by God to be a people zealous for good works. Zealous for good works. Do you hear this? This is the, this is the criticism that we get from the world, from world orthodoxy, is that they're a bunch of zealots. But that's what the scripture says we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be zealots for good works. And the problem is, in many places, this parish has a self-weeding quality to it. The people who do become red hot with passion, they bounce. And so God protects us, I suppose. I can't explain it other than that. That maybe it's that I'm too weak. Maybe it's that I wouldn't know how to deal with it. And maybe God is protecting me. And in protecting me, by just having these people filter themselves out, he's protecting us. And if that is the case, then I humbly thank him and find myself unable to express the gratitude because it's just enough. It's, I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago, and to be a, to be a priest and to be a, a dad and to be a grandfather and to be uh, someone who's trying to provide for your family and to be someone who's trying to keep your house heated, and all, all of these things. It's not possible to do all those things. It's not humanly possible to do all those things. It's just not. I tried to pick up the candle stand last night, and I just reached over with one hand, and the gentlemen, were all, they all were able to witness that. And I reached over with one hand, and then uh, it felt like somebody filled the base of it with lead or something. So, okay, so can't do that anymore either. And, um, but this is the way life is in a fallen world. And part of the reason that our bodies are so broken, part of the reason that our bodies are so broken is because they were, they were brought into a world that had been corrupted by man's sin. And because of that, the rays of the sun affect us negatively where they shouldn't have the rain that falls to the earth gathers up all of the poisons that we've impregnated the, the ground with, and then they take it up into the, into the heavens, as it were, and then rain it back down upon us as a, as a punishment for our sins. The food that we eat is not even real food. We have to search. We have to, you can't just go to the grocery, grocery store and expect that you're going to eat real food. And you, you can't afford organic food, so you have to really strategize. How are you going to do this? How, how are you going to 
put things into your body that aren't designed to kill you or at least to alter you genetically. How are we going to do it? Well, we came into this world and none of us had a choice of coming into this world or not. Our parents made a choice and then here we are, right? So we have to deal with it as it comes. And last night I told you that in this succession of feasts, man has been corrected because God became man. The Jewish religion has been done away with by the circumcision of our Lord. And I can't emphasize that enough because I don't think people really understand the significance of that feast. And through his baptism by John in the Jordan, the earth has received an inoculation against the violence and the atrocities that we've committed against it. Because its creator, the one who spoke it into existence, entered into it and penetrated it below its surface, entered into the heart of the earth. And this is what he desires to do with us. The scripture gives us many different motifs that we can understand. Our hearts are stony. Our insides are dry, but they're supposed to produce living waters. Our heart is cold, but it's supposed to be warm. And all of these things cannot be corrected by our own efforts. And that's hearkening back to zealous unto good works. But without our good works, they will not be cured. And this world will not be cured. Without our participation in the saving grace of God, without our collaboration with him, we cannot be saved. And so as I was talking to some of you this past week, uh, we, we read in the lives of the saints, we read about these wonderful experiences that the saints have, And we say, I want that. I want what they had. I want the end result of what they had. I want the grace of God. It it seemed amazing for them. And they didn't even eat for several days. And they were floating above the ground. And they were walking on water without sinking. And they they appeared on one continent and then on another continent, either at the same time or just shortly after appearing on the first, mystical transportation. I want those experiences. But what we, what we have to remember, and what I constantly try to remind you of, is that those experiences are the prerogative of God to bestow upon us. Those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those are the fruits, and I said plural, fruits, because the fruit of the Spirit is singular, but in a certain sense, it's distributed in a plurality of ways. And our insides, which are a barren desert, become fountains of living water. And our heart, which is cold, is warmed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And our minds, which are like a brass ceiling, preventing the revelation of God from coming in because of our pride, are humbled by Christ coming into the world. And when we, when we accept that, when we embrace that for ourselves, then we become humble people. How could we not? Look what he did. How could it be that we could retain any kind of pride in ourselves? How could it be? I mean, it never be. But our job is praxis. His job is to give us the gifts And the gifts are reward gifts, but not on the basis of any good that we've done. There's the tension. There's the tension for your Christian soteriology. They are reward gifts, and they are not given on the basis of any good that we have done. But unless we do good, we will not receive them. Whoa. Sobering. It's kind of like you're busy trying to get where you need to go. And you come to the train tracks, and you're in a hurry, and you've already been speeding, and then the barrier drops down. You see the lights come on, and you think, what? There hasn't been a train on this road for 10 years. The barrier comes down, the lights go on, and then the cars just start passing you, one after another, after another, after another, after another. And these are the opportunities that we fail to 
understand, we fail to comprehend that these are the opportunities, because what God wants us to do is to quiet ourselves. And we're busy rushing, 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 rushing. We fail to do the good that Christ has set us aside to do. We do accomplish a lot of meaningless, pointless things, and we do become inflamed with passion. And you can sit there while the train is passing, and you can think about all of the things that you need to do, or you can think about the one thing that you've been avoiding doing, and that's keeping prayer, cultivating prayer in your heart. And it doesn't matter. That's just a silly example, but how God stops us in our tracks. He stops us in our tracks, and we become resentful when he does that, but it's a gift. It's a gift so that we'll come to our senses, so that we'll wake up. And we'll say, what am I doing with myself? What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my family, with my job, with my education, with my children? What am I doing? And why am I doing it? Am I doing it for Christ's sake? If I am, then I have to be doing it in the way that the saints have done it, with dispassion, with humility, with a willingness to yield to others. This is summarized in, it started with the nativity, and then it really came to its full flower in the circumcision of our Lord. But then when he was baptized in the, in the river Jordan, and St. John, the patron saint of this temple, was hesitant, and he said, Lord, I can't do this. You should be baptizing me. And the Lord said, let it be to fulfill all righteousness to fulfill all righteousness. And you see that there was nothing that the Lord would not do to fulfill all righteousness. And we have to be that same kind of people. We have to be the saint. We have to imitate Christ. This is what it means to be a Christian. We have to be imitators of Christ. And he said, let it be right now in order to fulfill all righteousness. And we say, unfortunately, we say, Oh, I hope it can happen right now so I can satisfy my lust. Oh, I hope that it can happen right now so I can satisfy my avarice. Oh, I hope that I can get this so that my acquisitiveness can be satisfied. Oh, I hope that they won't get this so that my covetousness can be indulged in. Right? And it goes on and on and on and on. We're not imitators of Christ, but this feast calls us calls us into the water with Christ, who said, let it be so in order to fulfill all righteousness. And he deigned to receive baptism by the hand of a man, a normal man, not a normal man, but a man like us. He's the greatest man born ever among women, but yet born of normal genealogy as we are. And our Lord allowed himself to receive that from him. This is the God that we worship. This is the true God. This is the Son of the Everlasting Father. This is the one who was sent by his Father into the world because the Father loved us. This is the one who came and fulfilled all righteousness for us so that he might leave, not leaving us alone, but because he would send another who would be our comforter, the paraclete, even the Spirit of God. May we worship God in Trinity, this theophany, May we worship the Trinity in truth. May our hearts be united. May our minds be singular to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. We hope you found these materials to be spiritually beneficial. If you benefit from what you hear and would like to know more about Orthodoxy generally or about genuine Orthodoxy, please don't hesitate to contact me. If you would like to visit us, please check out our website at birthofthebaptistorthodoxchurch.com for the service schedule and contact information. It would be an honor to meet you. Also, keep up with us on Facebook or find me on Instagram at Art of Prayer Workshop, where you can find beautiful, traditional, hand-painted icons as well as other devotional items for your home chapel or church. If you'd like to support us financially, donations can easily be made through PayPal at fellowheirs at hotmail.com. Please remember us in your prayers.